Hey guys, today we are testing another AMD Radeon low profile video card, but this one is more powerful. This one is the RX 550, a Dell OEM version of that card with 4 gigabytes of VRAM. I paid, this one was not really a bargain, I paid 100 Australian dollars, which is around 65 US dollars, so not as cheap as what we tested before, but I really wanted to see what this card can do. Here we have the card. So this is low profile and that's likely why you're watching this video. These are perfect for upgrading small form factor machines like a Dell Optiplex or HP Elite Desk. If you look closer, you can see here, this is a PCI Express 3.0 interface, but it's only using eight lanes. So this means if your main board is older and has a PCI Express generation 2.0, then you will miss out on performance. The cutoff point is with the uh, Ivy Bridge, going from Sandy Bridge to Ivy Bridge processors. So Sandy Bridge is PCI Express 2.0, Ivy Bridge is 3.0. And what is Ivy Bridge? Think of the i7-3770 and the i5-3570. The outputs are all DisplayPort. So if you don't have DisplayPort, you can use various adapters. For example, this one goes from DisplayPort to DVI, and that one goes from DisplayPort to HDMI. They can do 4K60 and carry audio. Here we can see the graphics card in GPU set. It has 512 shaders, four gigabytes of GDDR5 memory connected with a 128 bit interface. The clock speed is rated at 1219 megahertz, but we can see here in games, it doesn't quite hold that speed all the time. It does slow down a little bit, but maybe we can tweak that later with uh, changing the power settings and maybe under vaulting it a little bit. This is our test system. The main board is from MSI. It's the Z590A Pro. We're using 16 gigabytes of dual channel memory with memory modules from TimeTech running at 3200 megahertz. The SSD is from Samsung. It's the 980 Pro. This is our NVMe M.2 SSD. And the processor is an Intel i7. 11700F, so that one has eight cores, and we're using a CPU cooler from Arctic. We're using an Asus Tough Gaming 750 watt power supply. I used a power meter to measure what the entire system consumes. Sitting idle on the desktop, 44 watts, and running games, the entire machine consumes only 90 to 92 watts, so fairly energy efficient. In the BIOS, I'm loading the BIOS defaults and then make sure the XMP profile is enabled. We're installing Windows 10 Pro. After that, all the Windows updates through the internet. And then we're downloading the AMD graphics drivers. We have version 22.10.2. These are from yeah October of this year. Games are next, but let's have a look at 3D Mark. We're getting 22,939 in CloudGate, 13,681 in Skydiver, and 4,028 in Fire Strike. First up is Dirt 3, my favorite racing game, 1080p, this time with high details, over 100 FPS. Absolutely awesome. So we can already tell this video card is in, in, in an entire different league compared to the low profile Radeon cards that we looked at uh, on the channel previously. Strange Brigade using the Vulcan API, 1080p medium details, just over 30 FPS. So this is really nice. We can sort of uh, estimate that in modern games, this is a 720p 60 card or 1080p 30 card. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p with the lowest details, again, over 30 FPS, almost around 40. So this is also pretty impressive. Doom running at 1080p with medium details. And this surprised me. It's sitting just below 60, sometimes hitting those sweet 60 FPS. Dead Space is an older game running really well, 1080p. All the details are maxed out and we're getting over 100 FPS. Now, I got some feedback about my games and you mentioned Cyberpunk 2077. Here we are, 1080p, lowest preset. It runs anywhere from 20 to 40 FPS. I'm running the built-in benchmark. 
makes it really easy to test. And you also wanted me to check out GTA 5. Well, this game is a little bit of a pain to test because it has so many graphics options and there's no preset. So I can't just say I tested it at high details because, well, what does that mean? And you can, I'll put some footage on the screen with all the different settings. So I sort of dialed it in with normal details, but without any um, like tessellation and any of those effects that might tax the video card too much. And yeah, with those settings, the game seems to be running fairly well. Uh, you can tweak it down with the settings and it will run at over 100 FPS. But if you max everything out, it will run at around yeah, around 20 to 30. So this game, it really depends what settings you're using, but you can tweak it so it runs well. Half-Life 2 also runs beautiful 1080p. All the details are maxed out, but I enabled 4X anti-aliasing and 16X and isotropic filtering. So all the games will run beautifully on this video card. So this seems to be a pretty decent graphics card, but can it run Crisis? Here we have Crisis running at 1080p. I set the details to very high and it does struggle a bit. Uh, it does not hit 60 FPS most of the time. So it's a little bit all over the place. I would say it doesn't run Crisis at 60 FPS, but if you're happy with the cinematic 24 FPS experience, then yes, it does run Crisis. When having a look at overclocking or undervolting this graphics card in the video driver, all these options are blocked. Uh, there's nothing you can tweak. So I tried MSI Afterburner, but unfortunately also here uh, you can toggle and play around with the sliders, but as soon as you try to apply them, they just don't stick. So it seems this OEM uh, Dell graphics card is locked down, which is a shame. We can't do much in terms of tuning it and making it more power efficient or ensuring that it keeps the clock speeds locked at all times. Now there's more to a graphics card than playing games. There is video decoding and video encoding. And I found it actually quite hard finding decent documentation from AMD directly, which GPU supports which codecs. Um, there's some information on Wikipedia, but it's really hard to tell how accurate it is. So I had a look in the software that I'm, that I'm using for video capturing. We've got uh, OBS and here we can see support for the H.264 codec as well as the HEVC H.265 codec. Bandicam confirms the same. It supports the H.264 as well as the HEVC H.265 codec. In terms of video decoding, I was hoping it can support VP9 and some of the documentation points towards that. But when I play a YouTube video which uses VP9 and I check the device manager, um, I cannot see the video decoding of the GPU being utilized. You can get a plugin and force Chrome to use H.264 with YouTube. And now we can see that the video decoder is being utilized. So I believe VP9 is not, at least not fully uh, accelerated on this GPU. So what is my verdict on the AMD Radeon RX 550, the Dell OEM version? Not bad in terms of performance. This is definitely a step up compared to the, for example, the R7 250 that we tested in a recent video. So performance is much better. It all depends on the price. I think I paid a little bit too much. This is not the latest generation anymore. We still get modern driver support and it does accelerate video codecs, but it doesn't support the latest codecs AV1 and VP9. So keep that in mind. But you do get features like a Radeon Chill and a frame rate control and all these features. So uh, it's not too bad. It all depends on the price. And if you have a small form factor machine like a Dell Optiplex or HP Elite Desk, this is definitely a card I can recommend. It is unfortunately not Windows XP compatible. So if that's what you're looking for, building a small form factor retro gaming PC, you're better off with the Radeon R7 or R5 range of video cards. But for a more modern machine, this is definitely worth checking out. If you are interested in learning more about these small form factor machines that I'm talking about and low profile video cards, I have two videos for you to check out. One is a HP small form factor machine and the other one is a roundup of low profile video cards for Windows XP Retro Gaming. Thanks for watching and I shall see you soon.
with another one.